It's that time of the month again. Time to listen to this grumpy old man be a grumpy old man. I love it. Absolutely love it when Facebook does this. Doesn't want me to share my video as a video. (laughs) Awesome. Got to work out a way around this now. Um, Huh. Don't know how to get around this. Let's have a look. Please work. Oh, it worked. Whew, that was a relief. So it's shown a typo on it, which, um, you know, big help. Thanks, Facebook. Thanks, I hate it. <laughs> uh, let's get this up on Twitter, do the Instagram thing, and then, uh, you know, I'll do the usual talking thing, and then we'll uh, do some, some playing. Um, I'm not feeling well. For anyone that watched the stream I did earlier, you'll you'll know why. Youngish. I mean, I feel pretty old, man. Right. Oh yeah, I have to do Instagram, don't I? It's always fun. <laughs> Happy birthday, do a line. I know this is Scotland, but um, it's not my scene, sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is that time of the month. I am live on YouTube as we speak, as I as I make this video for you here on Instagram. And I will be there for the next few hours. It's my birthday stream, so I will be having fun, telling stories, teaching, transcribing, having a good time. Please do come and join me. YouTube.com forward slash Levi Clay. YouTube.com forward slash C forward slash Levi. I'm sure you can find me. I'll see you guys there. We don't want that to go out to Facebook and Twitter because I have just spammed Facebook and Twitter. Cool. So, da, 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 da. I am live. Yeah. So, I'm going to hang about and, you know, talk bollocks for a bit before I actually get some work done. Uh, but the goal of today, of course, is to transcribe, is to do my monthly transcription challenge, which is uh, over on Patreon. Now this uh, this time we're looking at Brooks Robertson's Mountains of Illinois. We will take a look at that uh, shortly. I'm just going to download it. I'll tell you. I'll tell you how my night's gone. <laughs> um, just while this gets downloaded. So I am not feeling my best. I feel I feel pretty rough to be honest. I've just been over with uh, my good friend Sue Sue Hulk or Sue Meekin. Uh, wife to Count Dankula, Countess Dankula, if you like, and we've just done a two-hour live stream on her channel, where we were going through and eating uh, all of the sweets, all of the Japanese import sweets that she'd been given at Comic Con, uh, both Glasgow Comic Con and London Comic Con. Uh, so, yeah. And she had a Japanese uh, sweet box that had been sent to her. So we sat through all of those and ate them. And it was a lot. I mean, we didn't eat all the food, you know, but we're just nibbling. Just a little nibble of all of these things. And over two hours, it really starts to to add up. Um, and by the end of that, I felt pretty ill. Um, so I do not feel my best right now. But we will make do. Maybe that's why I'm so bubbly. Because I'm... Uh, da da da. I'm all... Um, I'm full of sugar, let's let's put it that way. I'm absolutely full to the brim of sugar. Uh, So that's that's cool. Um, I mean, I I guess I could go on Sue's channel and actually watch some of that. I could show you some of that, but that's not what I'm going to do. So let me just go and grab my new toy. And we'll do the usual sponsorship bullshit. Uh, 
Oh, there she is. Now, of course, this isn't going to be a stream where I'm sitting and playing guitar. Uh, but this is this is my new toy, the Ormsby. Um, I have been playing this guitar so much over the last couple of weeks, however, however long I've had it. I love having a guitar sat like this, not on the knee. I love using the cut out there to rest it like this. And I have just been practicing and practicing and practicing. I did a stream last night for my patrons uh, just in our in our Facebook group. And to be honest, it was more of a motivator for me. I just sat and practiced. For half an hour, it was a good solid half an hour of practicing mechanics because uh, I find this guitar very inspiring to practice on. So big thanks to the guys over at Ormsby. Uh, they don't sponsor, you know, my my personal channel. They sponsor the Guitar Souls videos, um, but I am genuinely very impressed with how much I love this guitar. So I just thought I'd bring it up and say, isn't it isn't it pretty? Uh, if anyone has any questions about this, please do let me know. Outside of that, this stream is brought to you by my supporters over on Patreon.com. In fact, this stream is brought to you solely by those guys it is for those guys i am transcribing this stuff it's one of our monthly transcription challenges so all the content here does fall in line with what those guys are doing in terms of their study their practice they're developing their uh, transcribing skills this is a great skill to have right transcription um, not just to make you a better musician but it, it can be a it can be a job you know this is my job transcribing is my, my job it's how i make my living um and not just not just uh in, in terms of teaching it but you know actual doing jobs for people i have employed people to transcribe with me as well on bigger projects so that's the other thing like um i've got guys that has helped them develop their playing a lot but i've uh, just recently i've had you know students ex-students ex-patrons reach out and say hey just to catch up just to let you know you know I, i'm making money transcribing now so thank you so much for all the help so um that is a big part of what i do over on patreon you want to check us out there is a link somewhere i'm sure you can find it uh, and finally stream is brought to you by my books the books that pay the bills let's put this guitar down probably not going to need it tonight probably i say probably Never know, do you? Uh, yeah, if you would like to check out some of my work, please do head on over to Amazon uh, and search for Levi Clay. Uh, I've got plenty of books there. I've got a new one coming out in January, and uh, we've just been given the go-ahead to write the next one. And I can tell you now, this is a an exclusive, exclusive, you're hearing it here first. Uh, the next book will be a hybrid picking masterclass, so we're going to really dig into the hybrid picking technique, developing using one finger and then two fingers both for double stops rolling i'll introduce using the little finger it's going to be exercises across multiple styles of music because of course our goal is to just make you a, a more well-rounded player right oh hiccups fantastic who knows how long that will last uh, anyway how is everybody this evening what is what is going on what is happening uh i'll read through these comments lee mcdade says uh grumpy youngish man surely i'm 31 uh, on monday so i guess some people would call that uh some people would call that uh young ish <laughs> i feel pretty old now i'm definitely at that age where how, how would i describe it right so obviously i'm married uh, i don't have any kids though uh but i'll be i'll be up at night it'll be two o'clock in the morning i'll be playing some video games or something sat on the couch playing some video games and i'll go into the kitchen and i'll get myself a snack and I'll think, damn, I remind me of my dad. <laughs> and then I look back to me as a kid, right? And when my dad was my age, he had a 10-year-old. A 10-year-old son. Um, so, and we always think of our parents as being old, right? So I'm very definitely in that age bracket now where I looked at my parents and thought, you're old. <laughs> So what do I want to do? Do I want to acknowledge the fact that I'm old or do I want to sort of try and change the definition of what old is? I'm okay being oldish. You know, I'm older than I was yesterday, but younger than I'll be, younger now than I will be tomorrow. So, yeah. Um, thank you, Dante. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Daniele. Mark, do I prefer that over the Mayonnaise? They are totally, totally different guitars totally different guitars um and you know you say the minus i have five minus so um obviously that's a seven string 
Um, I'm not really a seven string player. I definitely prefer that guitar in terms of just sitting around and playing it, but that's solely because of that extra cutout. So I can use that to rest it on my leg. and It feels great there. Um, so it's a comfortable way to practice. Uh, it's inspired me to definitely play a lot more. Part of that is because the guitar is great, but also, you know, that's not to shit on all the guitar other great guitars that I own. I own tons of great guitars. I have uh, some Vigier guitars. I have a bunch of Mayonnaise guitars. I love my Fender, of course. I've got a couple of Fenders. Um, I have a lot of guitars. I'm very lucky. Uh, and I don't own any guitars that I hate, apart from my BC Rich. I hate, I fucking hate that guitar. <laughs> I need to do a video over that guitar. Um, I love the story around that guitar. I tell it more often than I need to on streams all the time. Um, my BC Rich Mick Thompson signature. <laughs> so uh, yes, the, the Ormsby is just a very different guitar. I think having a new guitar, one that you've not played before, that's always going to inspire you to pick it up and play. Maybe uh, maybe I'll not fall out of love with it, but maybe the hype will die down over the coming weeks. But I hope not. I'm trying to really ride that motivation. I'm trying to use that to actually sit and do some actual practice. Um, I've been spending a lot of hours working on the Frank Gambali thing over the last few days. And this coming month on Patreon, I'm making it a Frank Gambali month. So I'm going to be in Study Club, which is the $20 I do a private study club stream for my study club guys. You know, we watch instructional videos and we look at instructional books and stuff. And I kind of talk about the content and and transcribe bits and talk about how I would go about developing that for my own practice routine. And that's that's not a showy off thing. That's not a teaching moment. That is a genuine like. I wonder how Levi goes about practicing. I wonder how I can improve my own practice uh, mentality. That's what Study Club is all about. So this month we'll be doing some Frank and Bali stuff. Got some really cool content to look at there. And we will be transcribing some Frank and Bali videos. I haven't found the ones that I want to do yet. But, you know, I, I was going to say I've got time. But it's the first of the month. So really I should have that video done tomorrow at the latest. Uh, I'll see what I can get done though. So, yeah, there's the answer to that. Do I prefer over the Mayonnaise? It's a, it's a different guitar. They feel very different. You know, I hate using this as a description. But a couple of people have asked me. Um, the Ormsby feels cheap compared to the uh, compared to the minus, right? And you could hear that and think of that, think that that's uh, an insult. And that's not because the Ormsby feels cheap; it's because the minus feels very expensive. All of the minus guitars they just ooze expense. They really do. They they feel like very expensive instruments. The Ormsby doesn't have that kind of boutique feel to it. It feels a lot more. I guess the minus would would feel like what you would describe as boutique and handcrafted. Um, whereas the Ormsby's have more of a kind of uh, off the off the line factory consistent finish to them. Um, yeah, they just make you think different things. Obviously, I play my Hydra, my Miner's Hydra, quite a lot. I love that guitar, great guitar. When I play that though, I don't really think of that as being a modern guitar. Sure, it looks modern. There's a chunk cut out of the back, and it doesn't have a head on it. Uh, but in terms of how I play it, it feels like an SG to me. It feels and sounds like an SG. So to me, it's a lightweight SG. <laughs> uh, whereas the Ormsby, there's no, there's no kidding yourself with that guitar. That is a modern guitar. It feels modern. It just, yeah, great guitar. Really, really, really like that guitar. Um, I took the deal with Ormsby for the sponsorship for the Guitar Souls podcast, just purely because it was somebody that had an interest in what we were doing. They liked the content, and uh, you know, Mike is endorsed by Ormsby. I have zero problems with with Ormsby and, and Perry specifically. Um, I was just, you know, happy to work with someone on something. So uh, I wasn't expecting for guitars to show up and me to fall in love with them. I just figured, cool, it would be another guitar, um, and you can't complain about another guitar, right? Uh, but I have. I've fallen in in love with it, and I'm already looking at more guitars. <laughs> Let me see if this one's sold. Um, has it sold? No, so this one hasn't sold. Um, so I'm just going to jump to this one to show you this, what I've been staring at over the last couple of days. I sent Perry an email and I said, dude, I'm hooked. You've done it. <laughs> You've done the thing I didn't think that anyone would be able to do again, which is get me really interested in guitars again, buying guitars. Um, so I was looking at this. Look at this. So this is obviously a six string. The Ormsby I have has seven strings on it, which is awesome. Um, but this is a different beast entirely, right? This is a six string guitar. Um, and what you will notice as well is it doesn't have the multi-scale to it. Now, I like that. I Don't get me wrong. I love 
multi-scale guitars but i don't love multi-scale guitars for six string guitars there's no need for it i'm not tuning that low string low enough to need extra tension on the string right so the idea of a straight fret guitar really excites me um so this i just i i really really enjoy this this is a beautiful looking guitar um i like this and i have been looking at it and thinking well you know i could i could put an offer in on that <laughs> um you know cut couldn't hurt, could it? Uh, it's only £557, so it's less than £600. £100 shipping from Australia, you're going to get a little bit of import on it. That is a ridiculously cheap guitar. For what it is, that is a ridiculously cheap guitar. And I think, well, it's for a couple of reasons. One, it's a prototype. You know, Ormsby, people expect the multi-scale thing. You're going to pay more if you go for a multi-scale. If I just pull up a sort of comparable multi-scale uh, that's a custom shop. It's not really fair to to draw that comparison. Um, I'm looking for a a six string hype just for comparison. It's a seven string. Why are they all seven strings? There we go. So an Ormsby uh, hype GTR six multi scale. Yeah, more fancy finish on it, of course. Now this is multi scale. It costs a lot more. So that that red one. that beautiful absolute steal of a price if it's not sold by the end of this stream i will be heartbroken if someone doesn't buy me that for my birthday i will be disappointed absolutely in love with that guitar i tell a lie actually that wasn't the one i initially was staring at so i actually sent perry a message saying can't stop staring at this Let's see if it's still there yeah <laughs> can't stop staring at this it's the same guitar but in in green um, and within 24 hours, that one had sold. So, <laughs> um, you know, you, you've got to act fast on these. Uh, that one, absolutely, absolutely stunning. Um, I still, I think I prefer the uh, the green one over the red one. The red one's great. The, my only issue with the red one is I look at it and I'm like, well, you know, I've got my Vigier, which is still my number one guitar. It's just that guitar, is there's something special about that. It was, there was magic went into the build of that guitar. Um, do I need another red guitar? The answer is yes the answer is no but the answer is i can so maybe i should <laughs> saves me buying more magic cards right that's what i'd really like to do just spend all my money on magic cards right <laughs> okay so let's keep reading um how does the arms be compared to the miners other than being seven strings so of course it's worth pointing out gregor that i do have a seven string uh miners and i will be doing comparison videos of the six sorry the seven string uh, minus to the seven string Ormsby uh, to compare you know what sort of differences the multi-scale thing does my most popular video on YouTube and it's approaching 200,000 views now at this point is my uh, my Ormsby video where I play the the six string and I compare it to my Vigier the one with straight frets now as I said a few seconds ago I actually don't personally get the appeal of multi-scale on a six string because I don't I'm not detuning um but on a seven string that's where the world really opens up so i'm looking forward to doing some comparison videos of the seven strings uh multi-scale versus the regular and also those will be brought to you by ernie ball ernie ball have been kind enough to reach out and uh, i've struck up a deal with those guys those guys are absolutely fantastic i've got all the time in the world for them i played ernie ball for a very very long time uh in my youth before i was courted by didario and it feels nice it's I hate it. It's such a cliche to say it feels like I'm come home. Um, but, you know, th that's how I feel. <laughs> uh, only ball iconic strings. So they're going to be sending me a bunch of strings that we're going to be using to check gauges and getting, you know, comparable levels of tension um, to compare tone and things like that. I'm just trying to wait to get my studio finished before I do that so I can not only have a video that sounds good, but I really want it to look good. So, um, yeah, there you go. Um, Hosea says happy birthday Levi thank you very much Cristiano happy birthday thank you very much Chip thank you very much Plata O Plomo thank you very much <laughs> what are the main advantages of headless for my style of playing What does what is my style of playing I don't really know what that means nowadays um, there's no advantage there's no disadvantage apart from the fact that when you have a headless guitar you can't bend behind the nut and as a country guitar player, I like to bend behind the nut. So on a headless guitar, you know, that is something that is missing. 
Um, but in terms of, you, you know, your next comment is obviously you have a soft spot for headless designs. Actually, it's, it's kind of both, right? My favorite guitar is the Telecaster. No ifs, no ands, no buts. I've done videos on it before. The Telecaster, to me, is the best guitar ever made. And it's so perfect because of its imperfection. It's so perfect because it's so shit. Every single guitar that came out after the Telecaster was an attempt to improve upon the design of the Telecaster, right? So when you pick up a Telecaster, you're acknowledging the fact that this isn't a perfect instrument. And when you acknowledge that when you pick up a guitar, you let go of all of the, oh, wouldn't it be better if this thing was improved? Wouldn't it be better if this thing was a little bit better on it? No, you know before you pick it up that it's not going to intonate perfectly because it has three saddles on it. Um, it's not going to be comfortable to play because it doesn't have any contours on it. It's not going to be streamlined with a thin and fast neck. It's not going to have these big massive frets on it. You know, these are these guitars, you just have to accept they are not perfect. Those are my favorite guitars for that reason, right? It's a it's a, uh, a philosophy behind the instrument that really gets me. Now, I do own two headless guitars, and I do have a soft spot for the headless design, and that's because I spend a lot of my day sat here transcribing for people uh, and teaching on Skype and stuff. And if I do have a long day where I am teaching a lot of lessons, there is nothing better than having a guitar that doesn't weigh very much, right? Uh, the I'm gonna. I want to see if I've still got the photos of this, so I can give you the exact, um, the exact weight. And if I haven't, I know I put them on Insta, so I can get them there. So not not going to be the end of the world if I don't. Yeah. Okay. So I have to go to my Instagram. Uh. Okay. So the <laughs> absolutely insane. The Ormsby. The Goliath, that's the word I was looking for. The Goliath is under six pounds. That guitar weighs less than six pounds. It's five pounds and 12 ounces. It is an extremely lightweight guitar. It weighs absolutely nothing. If you put it in a case, the case will probably weigh more than the guitar. It is so lightweight. So to be sat with a, with it in front of you uh, on your lap for a, for a long period of time, uh, I never thought that weight really mattered all that much, but after playing that for a couple of days and then picking up my Telecaster, the first thing that goes into your mind when you pick up that Telecaster is, wow, this thing's really big because the neck is, you know, sticks out and it's got a headstock on the end of it and it doesn't sit on your leg perfectly like that Ormsby does and it weighs a lot more than the Ormsby. And there's, you know, never have in my life if I picked up a Telecaster and thought to myself, well, this is really heavy. I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> um, but spending time with the Ormsby put me in that mindset. It was just like, wow, the telly is heavy. So I have a soft spot for the practicality of the headless design. I do need that TTM sponsor, I do. I've just been sent some documentation, some court documents for uh, TTM related things. Not that they've sent them to me, just following up on the $100,000 lawsuit that Lance has out against him at the moment. Um, the the person that is suing Lance, it looks like, if I understand correctly, um, that they are now having to have the police involved because so far they have been unable to serve Lance the papers for this lawsuit um, as in they are go people have been going to his door to serve him these papers and he's just refusing to answer the door they can hear his dogs barking inside and he is just pretending he's not there <laughs> um, because that's exactly what you would do if you know there was a hundred thousand dollar lawsuit waiting on the other side of the door right <laughs> so um i think lance has probably got enough on um i don't think i think the last thing on his mind right now is looking to sponsor people <laughs> uh, and that's just one of the lawsuits that that man is having to deal with so um that's that's incredible tailed feature how's it going buddy moo moo i mean i don't know why you're telling me that but um it isn't my birthday today tailed it's my birthday on monday I was born on the 4th of November, uh, but this is in line with my monthly transcription uh, stream, so I thought I would do that. Uh, Chip, you love your Gibson Les Paul double cuts. Uh, I'm trying to think if I've actually played a Gibson Les Paul double cut. I don't think I've actually played a Gibson Les Paul double cut. The closest I've come would be, I guess, a Yamaha SG2000. 
that similar in concept, um, but obviously it's more akin to an SG. It's like an SG, but as thick as a Les Paul and weighing as much as a lead brick. <laughs> uh, those guitars are really, really heavy. So, um, yeah. Uh, honestly, uh, I sit here and I say the Telecaster is my favourite guitar. Um, it's a, it is a throw-up between the Telecaster and the SG, but they are very similar guitars if you really think about them. Very similar. Very simple guitars. Oh, I need an SG in my life again. I miss my SG. <laughs> uh, love that headstock design. And I, I assume that headstock design is on the uh, Ormsby that I was looking at. Worth pointing out that that, of course, is uh, an homage. Let's go of an homage to the Black Machine headstock. For those of you familiar with the Black Machine headstock... Here's your black machine headstock. <laughs> this is actually really fitting because uh, I was talking to Doug Cartwright, um, you know, one of my best pals, just yesterday, and he sent me some pictures of a new black machine guitar, and it was a headless guitar that Doug of Black Machine Guitars had just made for himself. Uh, because Doug had, <laughs> my Doug had gone to the pub and bumped into black machine dug um and they got drinking and it turned into an all-night session um and yeah we went back to dugs i believe um black machine dugs and tried out his new guitar um so you know that's that's well timed anyway when you look at the ormsby headstock it's very much inspired by that black machine this will come as no surprise though because when you look at that particular model that is called the hype and it was originally called the hype machine um, why was it called the hype machine? Because black machine guitars were so hyped. People were buying these guitars for like two and a half thousand pounds, but because the wait list was so long, they were then selling these guitars and people were paying around 10,000 pounds for these guitars. The hype surrounding these guitars was just so ridiculous, and it still is. Like, there's legendary status around these guitars. Uh, and I don't see it myself. I mean, don't get me wrong, great instruments, but at the end of the day, it is a. It's kind of like going to that, um, going for the uh, Telecaster mentality again when you think about it. You know, it's a piece of wood, a neck bolted onto a body. How good can it, can it be? As if the neck fits the pocket perfectly, how good can it be? It's an imperfect instrument, it's an imperfect concept because no matter what way you spin it, you know, it can be improved upon. You could put true temperament frets in it. Um, you could mess around with the scale, even minorly. You know, credit where credit is due. The thing I really like about the Ormsby is that leg cut, but I think really that comes from from Ola Strandberg. Um, that's a man that is, you know, really looking to improve upon the design of the guitar. And while the Endure neck isn't my favourite kind of guitar evolution, the fan that the Ola puts on his guitars is my favourite. There's half an inch difference. It's like you know. Uh, 25 to 25.5 or 25 to 25.25 it's a tiny little difference in the in the scale so you don't really notice it in terms of um, playing the instrument but you'll notice it in terms of tension you'll be able to get a little bit more tension on that low string and I'm a big fan of drop D so being able to drop that string and maintain your tension a little bit without having to thicken the strings up to the point where the tone starts to suffer you know, I, I have a lot of time for that. So, you know, hats off to Ola. Anyway, let's uh, let's keep going. Uh, Nicola says, yeah, you caught the stream this time. Awesome. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Hey, man, how do I play a G7 over B? I'm trying to play how insensitive and I can't find a proper voicing for that one. Cool. I can give you, a, I can give you an answer for that one. <laughs> Cardboard crack. We're talking, somebody's talking magic. <laughs> I uh, I kind of want to. Yeah. I'll probably do this on my phone. Let's have a look. This is what you don't see when I'm streaming. Let's do that 
my computer is surrounded by magic cards there's cards here it's everywhere they're just cards everywhere i'm always designing in my mind <laughs> um so yeah cardboard crack uh g7 over b sure the voice and you're looking for g7 over b it's also worth considering though that a big part of a big part of playing um guitar and chords on the guitar is chord reduction so while uh, the chart might say g7 over b i'm only ever really in a context like that going to play g over b because i think adding the seventh doesn't sound too hip i don't think it does the chord any justice if you take an e shape g your first inversion of that would be b g and d that'd be a g over b now you can put the f on top of that that would be a g7 over b so that's 7 on the low E, 5 on the D, 7 on the G, and 6 on the B string. Now that 7th is a bit in your face, but just the bottom part. Imperfect guitar. So there you go. There's your G7 over B. First inversion chord. Now, of course, if you learn the drop system, um, more specifically drop three voicings, you will come across all of those um, voicings. You will you'll deal with those. Um, I think the drop three voicings are a little bit more practical in terms of the sound. So uh, there you go. There's your answer, G7 over B. Cool. Am I going to do a comparison of the Ormsby to the Vigier uh, Mysterious Green Excalibur? Uh, no, I don't own that guitar anymore. <laughs> I traded that guitar for my 8-string. Um, what are my thoughts on Strandbergs? Well, you missed you missed the comment. I talked about Strandbergs. Uh, I've got a lot of time for the Strandbergs. I love the design. I, I love the scale difference. I'm not a huge fan of the Endure Neck, but I really do like the design of the guitars still. Um, I Yeah, I'd absolutely own one. Um, when I go to London and I hang out with Doug Cartwright, he has lots and lots and lots of guitars. And I always find myself going for his, um, going for his Strandberg because... Because of that cutaway on the leg, I just think it sits so comfortably. No matter how you position your body, there's a comfortable way to put that Strandberg down. Um, <laughs> you know, earlier when I was talking about the Telecaster, I said the thing that I love about the Telecaster is the Telecaster is an imperfect guitar, and every guitar that came after that is an attempt to improve, improve upon the Telecaster. But it's worth pointing out that every one of those improvements upon the Telecaster acknowledges the existence of the Telecaster. So they take it and then try and improve upon it. Whereas I feel with the Strandberg stuff, Ola seems to have designed a guitar from the perspective of how would I design a guitar if I'd never seen one before? Uh, and I think he did a great job. So yeah, lots of time for Ola. Lots of time for Ola Strandberg. Uh, so Cristiano, I'm thinking about getting a telly because of my videos. Uh, and Ted Green stuff is a great reason. Um, never touched one in nine years of playing. Tellies are a magic, man. Um how was the magic thing at the bar not sure what that's in reference to 
Uh, I have a good taste in vid vidya. Don't, I'm not sure what that means either. What's my favorite favorite major eleven voicing? Um, I don't think I've ever played a major eleven voicing because I can't think of a time one would ever come up in a song, because everybody knows that if you see C major thirteen, you don't play the eleventh because the eleventh clashes with the third. Um, so yeah, any time I would see uh, major thirteen, if I if I was going to naturally play an extension in there, I'd always play the sharp eleven. Um, so I would, yeah, no, I, I wouldn't, um, which is interesting because, uh, although, you know, we're saying that the fourth clashes, the 11 clashes with the third, I think that it's the double clash of the root clashing with the seventh and the fourth clashing with the third that makes that such, um, an, un, uh, an unenjoyable thing. Um, because when you play, um, like, a, a an add 11, and add 11. Uh, so root 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Um, I think they sound good. Uh, but as soon as you introduce that major 7th in there, uh, I don't think they sound so great. Um, you'd like to try out the Strandberg Telly? Yeah, that's an interesting... Um, that's an interesting uh, design. <laughs> uh, Magic the Gathering Meetup. I don't think I did a Magic the Gathering meetup. I, I mean, I... Oh, was that the Facebook post I made? That's just my local game shop. Um, I go in there and play a couple of times a week. Um, yeah. So, um, that's that's always good. That wasn't a meetup. That was just me playing with my regular play group. <laughs> uh, video games. Isaac. I'm wearing an Isaac t-shirt. And those of you that know my tattoos know that I've got an entire... This entire arm is tattooed with Binding of Isaac stuff. So um, there we go. And Russell asks again, is that telly I play an American or a Mexican one? That is a good question. It's Mexican. So it's the cheapest guitar I own, that Telecaster. I love that guitar, though. It's something It just feels good. It's not the regular Mexican one. It's not the Baja telly either. It's the the uh, player, the uh, the Roadworn series, the 50s Roadworn series. So it has a, uh, a nitro finish on it rather than the poly finish. Um, and it's it's road worn. It's you know it's scratched up. It's um, it's made to look old. <laughs> I've tried to make it look a little bit older than it is and uh, ruined it a little bit. But uh, yeah, then I've I've modified it quite a lot with you know different. It's got some different pickups in there, and I've got the Danny Gatton. Um... Oh, hello, dog. Do you want to come say hello? Come on, Edit. Come on, Sam. Good boy. Come on. Oh, you come and say happy birthday. Come then. Come on. Oh, there you go. Uh, sorry, what was I saying? Uh, oh, yeah, modified Telecaster. Uh, so I've you know, got the Danny Gatton dingus plate on there and um, uh, switched the control plate around because I like to have the control plate reversed on it. But, yeah, at its core, it's just a Mexican, Mexican Telecaster. Um, say hello, Teddy. You say hello to the people. You're up here, look. That's you. All right, should we do each of you? Who's coming up next? Come on in, mate. Oh, I caught you. I caught you. You jumped and I caught you. Well, hello. Hello, son. Should I say hello to the people? Can you say hello to the people? Do you... Oh, look at those ears. Do you, sausage eyes? You are a good boy. You say hello to the people before Daddy does some work. Ah, mum, 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 mum. Good boy. Should we get braver up here? Braver. You are a disgusting fat little creature. Stinky breath. You okay, son? You okay? You say hello to the people. You wave your little paw. You're a good boy. I mean, you're not. You bark all the time. You're a pain in the ass. Okay, you're going to go down now? 
Yeah. When you get them. Good lads. Oh, it's nice to feel loved. And people wonder why I don't want to go out and gig. <laughs> uh, right. Hey, Ross. How's it going, dude? Um, thank you for tuning in. And good to see you the other day. Um, Teddy boy, yes. And Stephen's online. Mikey. And there he is. I assume that's in reference to Brover. Um, okay, cool. So I'm going to gear up and do some work. We're going to look at some Brooks Robertson. We are going to have fun. I'm not going to lie, I'm exhausted, guys. I feel ill still after that stream that I did with Sue earlier. I've been up since like 9 o'clock, working in the studio, putting more walls up. The roof is finished now, so that's cool. Just got walls to do and uh, a sealant to put in, and then I can get a plasterer in, finish the electrics up, and then um, the floor, get the floors done. And then we're good. So that's uh, that's very exciting. Very exciting to know that that's nearly, nearly done. Very nearly done. Problem is, you know, how long does a plasterer take? How busy is a plasterer? <laughs> Can't even get a um, uh, someone to come and bloody make a shed. Like, <laughs> um, it's amazing that there's just the sheer amount of people that don't want to make. The, the, it's not that they don't want to get paid. It's just that they don't care. They've got enough work that they just don't care about doing your job. And to be fair, I do know what part of that is like because as a transcriber, there is a, there are a lot of times where I, you know, I don't need to do a job for someone because I'm busy or I'm not interested in it. Um, sometimes you say to the person, you know, it's not really, I don't have time for this right now, or this isn't my speciality, or I don't think that I'm the best guy for this or whatever. But sometimes you, you know, you intend to get back to someone, but you end up just not because um, time gets away, and before you know it, three months has passed. Um, so, yes. Anyway, let's take a look at this Brooks Robertson thing that I'm going to be transcribing today. Uh, why are you being shit? Should be better now. Just getting these errors. YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. As such, viewers will experience buffering. Fuck off. Uh, okay. So I'm going to play this Brooks Robertson video. We're going to listen to it. Then I'm, I'll talk about it while it's happening. Uh, make some comments about what's happening. I'm going to mark the file out here in Transcribe. Uh, and then we will we'll learn it. We'll transcribe it. So right from the start... Gonna be a free time harmonics piece at the start. This is really advanced in terms of transcription. I'm really going to start the transcription from here, just for the you know the be the beginning. I will go back and do the harmonics. In fact, no, I'll transcribe a little bit of the harmonics so you see how you'd notate that stuff. But I don't really spend hours and hours and hours transcribing that that intro to that where it's really um, fringe playing. Beautiful, I love that type of thing. I love the technique. Um, it's a nice thing to all. It <laughs> It's one of those things where it's all about vocabulary. So I've got some of those um, harp harmonic licks, cascading harmonic licks that I've transcribed from Lenny Bro and uh, Danny Gatton. And probably Carver Hayen was the, the big one. Um, but yeah, I think it's one of those where you always need more vocabulary to be really good at. So um, close this. What the hell is that? Huh? I have no idea what that is or why that's on my computer.
Everything's fallen apart in my brain. I've just been enjoying it so much. One, two, three. That's so strange. That's, um, wow. Oh, this is incredible. I don't think that's ever happened to me. Let me check this again. Wow. So I'm wiping my eye um, because genuinely this, mu this music moves me. It really moves me. It's such a beautiful rendition of a piece of music. Um, the song is Mountains of Illinois. Um, uh, Brooks Robertson, if you're unfamiliar with him, he is an um, incredible acoustic fingerstyle player. He was a student of Buster B. Jones, who's one of my favorite guitar players of all time. Uh, Brooks has some instructional material over at truefire.com, all worth checking out because um, Brooks, again, a student of Buster B. Jones, so he's picked all of that up and he's got his own thing with it. Um, he's just astonishingly beautiful in his arranging he just plays so expressively um, i was so caught up in the melody there i was so caught up in the music and listening to the chord changes and just appreciating it as a piece of art that i genuinely genuinely thought it was in four because i wasn't counting one two three four mark two three i was just feeling the music and pressing measure where i knew the measures were so at the end there where i felt that i'd made a mistake i was going back and checking it and i'm counting one two three four hang on has he changed now and then i had to stop and go hang on a minute has this entire thing been in three and it just hasn't mattered and that's exactly what it is it didn't matter to me because i was so engrossed in the music so um you know, if that doesn't grab your attention, if that playing doesn't um, grab your attention, I don't know how to help you. <laughs> it's just the most astonishingly wonderful playing. Um, Sue, you know I haven't been sick yet. Uh, good luck giving me the bumps. <laughs> um, John, thank you for tuning in, and I'm glad that you have tuned in. Uh yeah, so right, I'm gonna uh, take a look at take a look at this now. As I promised, I will I will begin out by talking about that harp harmonic technique at the start, both you know in terms of how to execute that and also how to transcribe that. That's that's important, right? Um, so I think it's worth pointing out that when it comes to transcribing guitar, a lot of you know being able to do that well comes from understanding the instrument okay so you know i often talk about transcription as being two distinct skills that you develop and the more you develop those two skills the better you get out of the overall art of transcribing and those skills would be rhythm recognition and pitch recognition um 
But actually, I feel that there's a third skill that is often not talked about, and that would be um, understanding of the, the particular thing you are transcribing. I often like to compare things to language, and I'm just going to draw in an analogy here, right? So in terms of transcribing the voice, if I ask someone to transcribe what I was saying right now, that would be easy for you, right? Because I am speaking the language, you understand the language, you can hear what I'm saying, and I guess more importantly, you don't have to worry about writing the rhythm of what I'm saying, right? But if someone was speaking to you in a language that you didn't understand, a language that you didn't speak, being able to write down what they're saying becomes a lot, lot harder. You might be able to replicate the sounds, but if someone was speaking to me in Chinese and you asked me to write down what they were saying, and I'm not talking translating what they're saying, I mean literally just write what they're saying, I could try and approximate what they're doing using the the sounds that I'm hearing, but that wouldn't be, you know, that's not how this works. If you tried to phonetically uh, write out what I'm saying now <laughs> you know if I say the word uh, my knee hurts you might write knee as n-e-e -E, right but we know that it's got a k in there so it, it's from un you have to understand the language right the reason I point this out is because when it comes to transcribing you know I can transcribe the piano but when I transcribe the piano what I'm really doing is I'm writing down the notes that I'm hearing I am not a pianist so my understanding of the inner workings of the instrument are not quite there in the same way that they are with guitar now, I draw this to your attention because as guitar players, I would like to think that when you listen to this, this first note, we, sh we can hear that this is a harmonic. It would be very easy if you were a piano player transcribing this and not being able to see what he's doing, you would hear that note and... Uh, be, be a B flat, right? Um, it would be very easy for you to hear that note and just write a, a B flat in the in the correct octave. But as a guitar player, I know that that's a harmonic. Now it also helps that I can see. Now, before I go ahead and transcribe exactly what he's playing there, we should probably talk about this technique, right? I want to just stress comments. Um, Diesel828, any advice on being in a rut and not wanting to play? Yes, listen to music that you love. If you can listen to this piece of music that we're hearing now and not want to sit and learn it after this stream, hang up your guitar because you've stopped loving music. That was it for me. You know, I was, I was so obsessed with technique as a kid. Um, that that sucked all the love of playing music out of me. Um, and I was in that rut of not wanting to play. And that all went away when I stopped and I listened to music again. I listened to the things that I loved. And I just suddenly, all of that stress and pressure to, oh, I've got to make sure my picking's as tight as it can be, all of that just melted away and all that mattered was the music. So, oh. quick lesson on harmonics. We should all know that on the guitar, I can, uh, when I pick the string, the string vibrates, and I can fret the string, and then the string vibrates from my fingertip, or well, sorry, to, from the fret to the bridge. I'm just gonna bring myself up so I can see myself. So the string vibrates from the fret to the bridge. It vibrates faster because of that. What I can do is if I cut the string exactly in half, so here at the 12th fret, if I place my finger on the fret, at the, uh, on the string, but not pressing down, just touching the string, and I pluck, we get a harmonic. Now when that happens, what happens is the string has been cut in half and it's vibrating this side and this side. And the tone, the sound that you get is a harmonic. Now anytime you cut the string in, in an equal amount, that's going to happen. So for example, at the seventh fret, that's me cutting the string in three equal parts from here to here, from here to here, <laughs> and then from here to here. So when I do that, uh, I can actually put my finger on the seventh fret. This part is vibrating, this part, and this part is vibrating. I can also 
up here at the 19th fret, do the same thing. I can do the same thing on the 5th fret. This will split the string into four equal sections. And the 24th. Bridge pickup's better. So, you already know this, right? Harmonics. Now, the same thing will happen when I fret a note. If I take the 3rd fret on the B string, I can put my index finger on the string at the 15th fret, so essentially splitting that string in half, and then I can pluck that string with my ring finger. And that gives me a harmonic, an artificial harmonic. So when you hear these uh, What's happening there is you're hearing a harmonic, then a picked or fretted note, and I'm pulling off there. So that's harmonic, picked note, pull off. Harmonic, picked note, pull off. So that's the technique. Don't you start. <laughs> so when I listen to what's going on here, um, that sounds like harmonics an octave higher than they need to be. Um, uh, I should check his tuning actually, two seconds. So he's tuned to, he's in standard tuning. So C sharp minor nine. Um, with that information in place, I can then I'm going to deal with the second harmonics as we go. Um, this is all free time, right? So I'm going to, it's three notes. I'm just going to do these as eighth notes. Ah, sorry, I need to bring my screen up so you can see, don't I? So I'm, I'm going to leave those three harmonics out. We'll come back to them. But this I can transcribe. This is a harmonic. So this is a harmonic on the fourth uh, fret and I'm playing an octave higher. He's holding a C-sharp minor 9 arpeggio, a uh, chord down, sorry. So I can write my harmonic in. Now I'm going to do that by typing 4 on the um, on the G string, the string in question, and making that, sorry, not a natural harmonic, an artificial harmonic, where the sounding note is the octave higher. Now what that's going to do is that's actually going to include it in the, um, in the tab. I don't like that. I'm going to fix that in a second. Um, I did it again. It's not a natural harmonic. It's an artificial harmonic. So those would be those notes. <laughs> Guitar Pro always makes them sound like absolute ass. Um, those would be the notes. Now, I don't like, as I say, I don't like seeing them in... Um, in the tab like this, just because I think that it can make the tab look messy. So what I'm going to do is bring up the style sheet, sorry, not the style sheet, the house style. No, it's the style sheet. Sorry, my bad. Under notation, under symbols, I'm going to deselect indicate where the string is touched for artificial harmonics and tablature. That's just going to give me a better idea. It's going to look better on the page.
So I would expect it to stay within that. Uh, and it does exactly as you would expect. So he's going to play a harmonic on the 4th fret. And then play the 4th fret on the G string. And now we ascend. So... Uh, huh. So we're alternating between four How can it sound so bad? So it will be uh, uh, so I'm, I'm just going to copy to save my life. Uh, I guess I can do So he plays that part twice. Ba -da -da -da, ba -da -da -da. Zoom out a little bit. Ba -da -da -da, ba -da. Ba -da -ba -ba. Then the chord is going to change. So that would be that entire. Now we'll deal with this in a second, right? I just want to go back and deal with these harmonics right at the start. Because my suspicion is, I'm sure he's still holding down this C-sharp minor 9. But he'll just be playing harmonics um, 5 frets higher. It's just two notes, yeah. There's two harmonics. Oh, okay. No, so he's staying exactly there. He's hitting fourth fret and then fourth fret. So over this, we can put C sharp minor, uh, sorry, C sharp minor nine because that's the chord that's being held. Now, if I put a let ring over all of this. Now, of course, it sounds terrible like that. If I just, um, if I double the speed, though, to like 240, just so you can hear it, I'm going to take the, the count off and we'll get. Now, of course, like I say, Guitar Pro will do a terrible job of, of hear, uh, letting you hear that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to make this a bar of 2-4. I'm also going to uh, beam these so it looks better. I'm going to put a key signature in because I know that this piece is in the key of E. Uh, that will help that. That will definitely make that look better. It's also worth pointing out, so before when I, I took the notes out of the tab, if we look at what this would look like with those notes there, you get this. Some people are perfectly fine with that. Uh, I just think that it clutters up the tab. I don't hate it, but I prefer, I think, I think I prefer without. Totally up to you though, right? Now, uh, I'm just going to put this at 140. I don't know. Tempo's not all that important, right? Oh, and also free time, so... Make all of that free time. Now, of course, another way of getting around that would be to have... Uh, we could have a bar of two at the start. I don't... 
that might make it a little bit neater to look at but not all that important is it uh let's see what's going on more comments uh he is using a thumb pick yep so ross good question right i i made the comment but i um i didn't clarify <laughs> i and i was aware when i did that <laughs> so i talked about um playing the the node with your index finger and then plucking with your ring finger that's how you would do it in classical guitar for playing melodies But for this particular thing, what you need to do is you need to use the thumb and the index finger to play the first note, and then the uh, ring finger to play the next note. And the way I, I've developed this for myself, because I don't want to have to, you know, not, I don't want to not be able to do this stuff. There's two ways you can do it. One, I, the way I prefer to do it is I drop my pick here. It sits in the crook of that finger. Probably do it with a pick you can see. So the pick would go in the finger like that. And I can still use that finger if I want to put the picks there if I need it, right? So it's in the crook of the finger. And I would use the thumb and then the ring finger here. So the pick is still tucked up there. Pick is in here, not using it. Or you could go the Danny Gatton way of doing it, which would be you would switch. Instead of using the pick and the index finger to hold the pick, when you do this technique, you would go for the pick and the um, ring finger. You would then pick. Uh, and you're picking with the pick then. It's hard to, it's hard to really show that. <laughs> I find that a lot harder, only because I've not practiced it. When you watch Danny, that's how he did it, but... That's how I, I do it. It works for me. So, yeah, that little detail, kind of important, right? <laughs> you carry on. So that answers that. Um, Pete Morris is online. How's it going, man? Um, beard. Yeah, the beard is getting out of control, isn't it? <laughs> Chainsaw Christmas. Uh, it's not my birthday today. It's my birthday on Monday. Someone should let famous birthdays know. Does my head in, right? When I go live on YouTube, YouTube email me and say, now live on your channel, birthday stream hang. Motherfucker, I set the stream up, I know. Um, right, cool. That's a different technique entirely. Well, same family of technique, but let's do the next chord just so we can see what it is. There's a doubled note in here. an interesting chord so we've got the harmonic at the fifth fret then we're playing the fourth fret b then the fourth fret a and the second fret um b uh bastard four four there we go So, um, two. So that's the chord. Just switch these to harmonics. A 
Now, what would this be? What is this chord? This is uh, this is very interesting. Um, let me think. think that that's probably going to be the third it's like an E flat E flat mm. Mm. that's really interesting oh no If we think of G as the root, then we've got the root, the flat five, or the sharp four, the six, the third, the sharp four again, and the major seven. So it's, I guess, yeah, the closest thing you'd be able to call it would be a G major, G major 13, sharp 11. Yeah, we'll go with that, G major 13, sharp 11. That works. Repeats. And again. Ba da da da. Ba da ba ba. Bastard lost it. So it's that up to the last harmonic. I'll do copy paste, don't worry. Uh, uh. Beautiful. There's a there's a chord. Again, I'll put a let ring on this. A tip is to get rid of the let ring on the last note, or else everything rings into everything else. Um, so now we've got these two chords. C sharp minor nine, and then a G um, G major thirteen sharp eleven, which would be like hello Connor. Uh, Kind of cool. Right from there, uh, yep. Yeah. So I'm, I'm getting, I'm seeing these double dots here, and I'm thinking, no, that's a bit low for the 12th fret he's playing um the 12th fret as an artificial harmonic sorry he's playing that open string but rather than fretting the harmonic we're getting that now i love this is the lenny bro thing right so I just need to get this voicing. Sounds like a 13 flat 9. Mm. 
Uh, it's not playing that. See where he's playing that. So he's definitely uh That's that's a head fuck. Uh Bastard. This is... Helps if my guitar's in tune. Double check that fret he's on there. Yeah. So if I look at what he plays, I can see that he plays this note here. This is the artificial harmonic. So we know this is the 12th fret. That mark there. We can see there. Finger paused there, right? He then moves up one fret. So, so the harmonic is very definitely on that... Um, 13th fret, which would mean the fretted note has to be on that first fret. And it might just be those two notes. I'm just, it's our third note in the middle though, that's the, it's driving me insane. I mean, you can put it in, it works. So anyway, my point is, for the interesting technique... Um, oh, sorry, bud. There you go. <laughs> um, right, you can see him now. I'll do that again. I can see the, the harmonic is here on this particular fret, and then when it moves, he only moves up one fret. So it's definitely a harmonic on the low string. Um, Of course, these ring into each other. It's just going to be the two notes. Easier to do. Uh, so that is already marked in as an artificial harmonic. Yeah, good. So anyway, point that I'm getting at, <laughs> and th again, this is a really fun technique. Um, is this artificial harmonic technique? This doesn't just apply to um, to alternating between harmonics and non-harmonics. You can do it. You can apply it to chord voicings as well, very easily. If I take a G major triad at the uh, fifth, fourth, and third frets of the uh, D, G, and B strings, I can make that bottom note a harmonic and play the other two. 
Now when I do that, what's that what that is doing is it's taking this G and moving it up an octave. So it's giving us this. Now that's not the best way to apply it. If I apply the same concept to like a G major 7 chord. I'm going to use my index finger to play a harmonic at the 3rd fret. And then use my other three fingers to play at the same time. It essentially takes this low G and moves it up an octave. So you get these four notes being played together. And any of these voicings, so here's that G7 um, over B that we talked about earlier. It's just a little, it's more like a piano cluster than going. But. It's kind of cool. So that's what he's doing there. Oh, I'm going to take this guitar off now and I'm going to go on and um, now we talked about the harmonics. Or am I? <laughs> we'll see. In terms of chords, you know, uh, what the hell are we going to call this? Is an E, an E flat, so it's, uh, oh, no, sorry, it's not, is it? Uh, that's, uh, oh, that's really interesting. So like there's major seven in there. That's I mean that's a mess of a chord. It sounded to me like a thirteen flat nine, but it's not. Um, oh well, such is life. <laughs> Sometimes you're wrong. <laughs> Andrea, how's it going, dude? Uh, thank you, Mr. Lap Stealer. Your birthday tomorrow. New guitar day. Going to see Greg Hawk in Edinburgh on Sunday. Uh, oh man, I'd really like to go to that. I'd love to go to that actually. What have I got on Sunday? I feel like I literally just made a commitment. I'm teaching at some point. That was the commitment I made. Um, have you a tab for seasons? I don't know what that means, Steve. Sorry. Seeing what's going on. Cool. Let's keep going. So, is there a cut there? There's not. Of course, there's not. There's the lick I played earlier, right? Now we're playing. Um, Oh no, I don't have that, sorry. Now you can see it much more clearly here. We're taking a chord voicing and we're playing harmonics on the bottom and then higher notes against them. It gives you these nice clusters, these little chord clusters where the notes are right next to each other even though on the guitar they're considerably more spread out. I'm going to go straight into the, because um, I don't want to spend all night doing these harmonics, but there you go. I've given you a, a rundown on how these um, these advanced harp harmonic things work on the guitar. Um, I'm going to leave myself a little bit of space. I'll come back and I will do that um, at a later point. Because I, I love finishing these transcriptions, I really do. It's almost like I enjoy transcribing. Uh, let me bring myself back up. Right, so I'm going to keep going. Right, so melody. So it's just an open E string. One, two, three. Ba, ba, ba. That's the other thing I didn't consider. Could we have wrote this all in three? I, I mean, I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to put it in three. We are out of free time now. This was still free time. But we are very definitely out of free time. Da, 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 da. Just, oh, it's so gospel, I love it. One, two, ba, da. Now I'm going to put my um, 
There's a swing marking in there, obviously. Ba ba ba. Um, now, because the rest of the the music is in time, I can subdivide by three. I'm just going to put my measures. I'm going to split this up. Actually, I'm going to put the uh, bass part as its own second part and then the melody over the top I think it will display a little bit better this way make it nice and slow uh, one, two, three. 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 I know that I can use the software to uh, transcribe to tell me what this is. Got the open E in there as well. So holding that for two beats, that's uh, an A triad. To an E triad. Doubled on the bottom. I can put the bass in. Now, the guitar player is never going to be as delicate as, as he is playing this. Thank you very much, Richard. Chords. I'm just going to put the bass in. So um, it's an A. A, A. Holds it. Plays it at the end of the bar. Now he just holds it across here. Although he plays this melody with the thumb, I think of it as being exactly that, right? A melody. So it's part. It's not part of the bass. It's part of the melody. So there's the bass part for that section. Now let's put the melody in. Uh, bastard. So it's going to be, uh, okay, let's see, 7, 9, 7, 9, 10, 11, yeah, that's right, 7th fret there. <laughs> um, so it's going to be 7, I'm sure he's playing the, No, 
like it's a B on the high string. So can we see what he does there? That's just hammer onto an A major triad. Uh, five, five. Beautiful, like an A7 there, maybe. <laughs> Seven, five. So it's gonna be. A D seven over over A. Yeah, it does play. Playing there, really? No. I think that does a better job of representing the melody um, when I uh, when I have it multi voice like that. You can see the separation between these parts. Beautiful, just touching. So again, bass notes. Bum. Six chord.
That'll do for the bass notes. Now back to my melody. So sixth. I really don't like this because he's it's just being lazy. I'm gonna go with that. Love Nuno Betting Courts play. I am going to put more in the bass here. This would be okay, cool. So, okay with this. Now we could put basic harmony in here if we wanted. This would be an E. We don't want to be pedantic with it. We could go E, and this could be A over E, and then E, and then E, and then E, staying on E. This would be uh, E over A, um, A, E over A. But in my mind, I'm just thinking A. Back to E. Now that didn't work in the slightest, did it? This is a C sharp minor nine. This is our F sharp seven. This will be B seven. Absolutely wonderful, right? Is there a way I can make this do what I want it to do? Falls on time. There's no way you're going to get this to play the way you want it to without going like um this is actually i guess an interesting option right i could go uh but 
I don't like the way that looks. I would rather acknowledge that Guitar Pro is shit at playing what I want it to play. I'm going to take that C-sharp off the beat and just put it on the beat here. Um, C-sharp minor 9. C, D, E. Yeah. But now we've got the basic melody for this piece, right? Let's keep doing some more. Now, this is a little bit messier. Is that an opening? It is indeed. I'm going to put that in the melody. This will be almost the same as this. I'll copy paste. Save myself time. Copy paste. Fix. So that's the melody. Now I can put the bass in. Now it's like he hits um, with a mute. Here he really goes dun da dun, but I am just going to put eights in. because I really like that that's sort of held throughout that. Same, hold that through. Chords, uh, E, A. And this would be, oh, it's not really, is it? Because you've got the minor third in there. 
Um, it's like a D7, D7 over A. Uh, yeah, D7 over A. Let's go the other way. Start with the bass notes. themselves in space. So there's our bass part. We put the chords on top. I'm going to put that um, like that. Okay, maybe I'm not. Then we're kind of back to the repeat of the melody, right? So uh, same again, E. Um, F sharp seven. Uh, B seven here. So I guess you could put C sharp seven in here, and then E. That's B seven. Okay, again, let's have a listen, see how it sounds. I mean, I know how it sounds, it's going to sound lovely. <laughs> This is an E augmented. 
implemented. together there we're not in 4-4 um, I actually think it's quite important listening back to us to call this a D7 over A because uh, we're in the key of E so we would expect um, there to be D sharps so for there to be D naturals in this um, what that screams to me is that this is like a, a flat 7 dominant Sure, it has the A in the bass, but that's why it sounds so so dramatic when you get there. Because you would expect, you know, E is in the key of A, A is in the key of A, C sharp minor is in the key of A. F sharp 7, all right, it's a secondary dominant 2 chord. But it's still very much expected within the key of E. Um, B7 is the 5 chord, so uh, E augmented for a little bit of spice. But yeah, this, this D7, D7 over A. I think that's an integral part of the sound of the chord progression. Ba -da -da. Ba -da -ba. Apparently I can't sing. Hate it. Thanks, I hate it. Let's continue listening. Same basic idea. Just Slightly bit of variation on the melody, but I'm actually going to skip over this. Okay, all right, that's nice. Okay, so there's a different ending. I'm gonna leave the right bars for it. So, um, same as the first, get the augmented chord in there, which is nice. Same basic idea. It's exactly the same. Now we hit the F sharp. Slightly different melody there. Nice little lick. Leading us back into the E. Slight variation there. Augme uh, sorry, not augmented. E over G sharp. This is a change. This is the section I want to take a look at. Um, so it's 16 bars that I will, damn it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Because I appreciate I've been streaming for two hours, you probably don't want to see me spending my time transcribing essentially the same thing, but with some variation. Essentially the same thing. But this... Is he hitting the A? Yeah. And then on top... Uh, 
Yeah, so... Um... There's our chord. Now, what is that? This is a C major 7 with an A in the bass. Well, a C major 7 with an A in the bass is like playing an A minor 9. So we've got a key change here. It's for dramatic. Um, yeah. We could put a, a different key signature in here. But different people argue on what, you know, what the best protocol is for that. Same approach though, right? I am going to... Bass part. Is that uh, almost sounds like there's major seven in that. That's not nice to notate. It's not E. Has to be E. <laughs> Same bass part here. We're going to move to F sharp seven. I actually don't like that he goes up to A in the bass part there. Go back, fill in the chords. Melody, sorry. Very Final Fantasy. That's why it sounds so lush. It's a minus six.
Again, I'm going to switch that to that. Ah, uh, shit. This is strummed. Try something different here. I'm going to do this and I'm going to go falls on time. Same idea, the difference being that we now slide into this. Copy paste fix, right? Probably ditch the rake. I said ditch the rake. Now this is a shame because this is this is just going to look a mess. There is no uh, Connor and the Owl. There is no uh, avoiding this. This is going to look a mess if I have four um, measures per line. Actually, in the the uh, so, so. There we go. 
there's just no way this is going to look. Uh, I guess it's manageable. So that's the the basis of the second section. Um, A minor nine. <laughs> This is an E. A minor nine. Uh, F sharp seven. And we got a B seven. It's a quick lesson. See what he does different from here. Do I still have the owl? Of course I do, Connor. I mean, that's, that's going to be me tonight, guys. I'm, I'm done there. I'll finish this transcription probably in the morning. Oh, I've got to shoot. I will finish the transcription and upload this to my Patreon page. because it is E's, F sharp 7's, B7's, it's not really switching to C major. That should give us enough. So we've looked at three things there. We looked at the artificial harmonics in the intro. We've got the silly little intro. Completely free time, right? And then... thing with this. I'm not sure what I did later on in the piece. Um, if I put this, the rest, the, the strike on it and have it to fall on time, like that. There we go. B section. I feel that should be just a little bit slower. I don't know why that is. That should start on time. I'm happy with that. I think that's turned out really well. So, 
Ah, two hours of Levi time. Over two hours of Levi time. I'll hang about for a little bit. Um, bring myself back up. Huge thank you to VPix, Vinny over at VPix, and the support that he has given me over the years. Please do go to VPix website, check them out, order some of their new picks. They've got some new dimensions, which I've got some coming in the post. Looking forward to checking those out. I'm sure they're great. Oh, I can't sit here and say to you they are the best picks um, because I've not played them yet. But, uh, you know, every one of our Vinny's other picks, I'd love them. Just love them. Um, they are home for me. So please do go and check those out. Um, you can also be like some of my awesome supporters over on Patreon. Support me for as little as $1. It's going to get you access to my private patron-only Facebook group, which is a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun in there. Um, $1 gets you access to that. $5 will get you access to my transcription challenge. So that means you'll be able to download this tab, um, along with you know every other tab that I've uploaded as part of my transcription challenges. Um, in the history of my Patreon page, which has been going for three years now, I believe. Um, and we're still going good. So, um, yeah, awesome, awesome people. Of course, you can get more. You can get your name on that credits roll, join my monthly study club, or even get a private lesson from me once a month. And lastly, if none of those things appeal to you, then please do go over to Amazon and search for Levi Clay. And there you will find one of my books, one of my many books. Um, these pay the mortgage. This is the main thing I do. Uh, I love my books, very proud of them. Cannot wait for you to check the new one out, though I do need to sit and do some more of the audio for that. But the book is all written, it's formatted, it's been edited. Um, they are going through the last proofreading stages and then lining me up in the marketing before we release in January. Um, so it gives me a little bit of time to polish up the audio files. Um, but yeah, if you could check one of those out, leave me a review on Amazon. That is very much appreciated. Um, tell a friend, tell an enemy, not just about the books, but about me in general. Um, yeah, so uh, what is Sue going on about? What the hell is a mukbang? Thank you very much, John. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And I'm glad you stuck around. I hope you got something from this. Um, not just from a transcription perspective. You know, there's multiple things that I hope that you get out of these streams. One of them is improving your transcription skills. That is, you know, first and foremost. Second is that you would enjoy it enough to go, oh, maybe I can learn something from this and check me out on Patreon. But more importantly, um, spreading the love of music. Like, that's the reason I do what I do, right? Uh, we had a great question earlier about, you know, what do you do when you're stuck in a rut and you feel uninspired and you don't want to play your, your guitar? My answer is, listen to music. Find music that you love. Take the time to, you know, love the music that you... Um, that you was the reason you picked up the guitar in the first place so i would hope that this has left you all with a new guitar player to go and check out brooks robertson he's not a household name by any stretch of the imagination but he's an incredible guitar player and you will enjoy you will absolutely enjoy um, checking his stuff out you'll absolutely enjoy listening and learning from him maybe it will result in you going and checking him out on true fire maybe it will result in you going and checking him out at a concert maybe it'll result in you purchasing a CD or even just telling your friends about him about him and listening to him on Spotify. That's always been the sole goal of me on YouTube. It has always been the goal of my musical career is to spread that passion and love of music to remind you all that there's a reason we are all in this love, in this art form, and it's because of the passion that we have for the actual for the art itself. And it's so easy to get caught up in the practice and the and the deadlines and the work that you have to do and the gigs and the tours and the commitments and the pressure and all of that stuff. And you it's we often forget that we love music and it touches us deep inside when i listen to this it touches me really deep inside i can just close my eyes and smile and it just transports me away because it's just a beautiful piece of music that just triggers the imagination 
So yes, I hope that that is something that you take away from this. I hope you got some value out of it. And if not, well, let me know and I will refund your entry <laughs> to this free stream. <laughs> um, right. Thank you very much, Mr. Lap Stealer. Um, it was you that was uh, off to see Greg Cock on Sunday, right? Um, yeah, enjoy that. Enjoy that. I'm trying to think if I've dealt with Greg on anything. I don't think I've done anything for Greg. I've transcribed a lot of Greg for people, but I haven't actually, you know, done Greg myself. So, um, <laughs> work, sorry, worked with Greg myself. So uh, that's, I guess that would be a bucket list type thing. <laughs> Having said that, we're competitors now, right? We both have slide books out. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Much love, guys. I genuinely really appreciate it. And I cannot wait to catch up with you. I'll be back next month. I will be online on the 29th of November, I would imagine. That um, is the last Friday of the month. Um, yeah. Peace, love, and good happening and stuff.